this is a poem about uh, address marriage equality. Even though um, every time I read it, I wrote this poem as a love poem, um, and uh, and that's sort of what it still is, uh, and it always has been to me. Um, I stopped reading it um, when I started to learn more about um, different things. And one of my favorite people on the planet is Kate Bornstein, and. Um, and she wrote an article about the amount of energy the queer community is putting into marriage when there are so many other things that desperately need our attention. And um, when I started thinking about that a bunch, um, I stopped reading this poem because I needed to figure out how I felt about it. And then I started reading it again because of two things uh, that um, happened in my life uh, that I couldn't stop thinking about. One, I used to be a preschool teacher. And uh, one day I was walking by two little girls sitting at the art table, and one little girl said to the other little girl, I'm gonna marry you someday. And the other little girl said, no, we can't get married because we're both girls and we're going to jail. Oh. What I realized was, in her mind, something not legal uh, was something that was criminal. And in our culture, criminal breaks down to evil, and from there, it spirals off all those things that desperately need our attention. And um, the other reason I started reading it is because I read this poem in, in Colorado, uh, and a woman came up to me after the show and said that several years prior, her partner had been rushed to the emergency room. And because she wasn't family, she wasn't allowed to be in the room with her where she was being helped. So she spent the entire night um, just going fucking nuts in, in the waiting room. And um, her partner ended up dying that night. And she told me that she wakes up every single day of her life not knowing if her partner knew how hard she was trying to get into the room to be with her while she died. Um, I'm from Maine. This poem, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and so I, I feel like reading this poem tonight. <clears throat> so uh, I'll give you, a, at the beginning of this, I sort of sing a weird song, um, and it's like this old blue, I think it was a blue moon, it was the original song, blue moon, anyway, um, I, when I was a little kid, I used to, my mother loved that song. I used to run around the house singing that everywhere. And I, uh, when I came out to my family, we didn't talk for quite some time. When I wrote this poem, I think I, I sort of secretly put this song into the, be the beginning of it, hoping uh, my mother would somewhere, you know, hear the poem and maybe have a, a change of part, which she has. You know, if you have families that you think might not have a change of heart about something, um, there's a really good chance they will, just so you know. Because I never in a million years imagined that my, my family would. But anyway. And I'm going to know 50 years from now when you're in a hospital room getting ready to die. When visiting hours with family members only, I want to know they'll let me in. To say goodbye. Because I've been 50 years memorizing the way the lines beneath your eyes form rivers when you cry and have held my hand like an ocean at your cheek saying, baby, flow to me. Because 50 years I've watched you grow with me. 50 years of you never letting go of me through nightmares and dreams and everything in between. To the day I said, buy me a ring. Buy me a ring that will turn my finger green so I can imagine our love is a forest. I want to get lost in you, and I swear I grew like a wildflower every hour of the 50 years I was with you. And that's not to say we didn't have bad days. Like the day you said that checkout clerk was so sweet, and I said, I'd like to eat that checkout clerk. And you said, honey, that's not funny. And I said, baby, maybe you take a fucking joke every now and then, so I slept on the couch that night. <laughs> Yeah, there were times we were both half in and half out the door, but I never needed more than the stars in your skin to lead me home for 50 years. You were my favorite poem. And I'd read you every night, knowing I might never understand every word, but that was okay. Because the lines of you were the closest thing to holy I had ever heard. You'd say, this kind of love has to be a verb. We are paint on a slip canvas. It's going to take a whole lot to stick. But if we do, we'll be a masterpiece. And we were. 
The beginning living in towns that frowned at our hands, holding, folding their stairs like hate notes into our pockets would pretend they weren't there. You said fear is only a verb if you let it be. Don't you dare let go of my hand. That was my favorite line. That and the time when we saw two boys kissing on the street in Kansas, and we both broke down crying, because it was Kansas. And you said, what are the chances of seeing anything but corn in Kansas? <laughs> we were born again that day. I cut your cord, and you cut mine, and the cords of time played like we chair with hope, like we could feel the rope unwind, the noose of hate loosening, loosening from ears of people like you aren't welcome here, people like you cannot work here, people like you cannot adopt. So we had lots of cats and dogs, and once even a couple of monkeys, you taught to say, hey, hey, for the monkeys! <laughs> You're crazy, my friend. And I was so crazy about you, on nights you couldn't sleep, I would lay awake for hours counting kind of sheep for you, and you would rewrite the rhythm of my heartbeat with the way you held me in the morning, resting your head on my chest, I swear, my breath turned silver the day your hair did, like a swore marigolds grew in the folds of my eyelids, the first time I saw you, and they bloomed, the first time I watched you dance to the tune of our kitchen kettle in our living room, in a world that left us hard as metal, we were soft as nostalgia together, for 50 years we feathered wings too wide to be prey, and we flew through days strong and days as fragile as sandcastles at high tide. You would fold your love into an origami firefly and throw it through my passageways till all my hidden chambers were lit with lanterns. Now every trap door of every pore in my heart is open because of you, because of us. So I do, I do, I do want to be in that room with you. When visiting hours with family members only, I want to know they'll let me in. I want to know they'll let me hold you while I sing. Baba da baba baba da baba baba da baba da baba dang a dang dang a ding a dong ding I'm so in love with you, baby I'm so in love with you. Dip da dip da dip baba da baba baba da baba baba da baba da baba dang a dang dang a ding a dong ding. Good.